welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a DIY, like I guess friendship bracelet. Basically how I make these really cute bracelets and here's the thing guys, is it super easy to make these bracelets? So kind of like I was debating for a while, I've, this is a very requested video. A lot of people were like, make the video, make the video. But then I'm like, there's really not much to it to make a bracelet. It's not like you had to be like that skillful, but I will show you guys like the color combinations. I'll show you guys some B-roll of all the different bracelets I make because I feel like I made some really cute ones. And then I thought also while I make a bracelet, so I could just do a little girl talk with you guys because I know that was a really highly requested video. A lot of you guys wanted me to sit down, have a little girl talk with you guys, and I thought that'd be really fun. So first, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the bracelets, and then I'm going to get into making a bracelet. I'm actually gonna be making one for you guys. So while I make the video for you guys, I'm gonna do the girl talk, and first things first. Let me tell you guys, I got everything off of Amazon. So I got these pretty much like these little like clay bead things. I got these off Amazon and I'm gonna just tell you guys a couple that I think were worth it and some that I don't think were worth the money. Also a little tip, if you guys are like, I can't afford it, you guys could ask your parent to buy it for you and then you could sell them to your friends for like $2 a bracelet or like $3, whatever you wanna sell them for. And then you could pay back for the beads. And then honestly, you could even make a little side hustle and make some money. I thought that would be a great idea because I feel like if I was in high school, I would totally pay like $2 for one of these bracelets because they're so cute. Or you can just make them for your friends, like just cause that's what I do. Obviously, if you can't afford it, that's a way you could pay for it. So everything I got is off Amazon. I got these little kits. I will leave it all linked down below. I think this like neon bright kit was like one of my favorites. And then I also have this like neutral kit. I made this really cool like neutral brown and tan bracelet, but I can't find it. It was like one of my favorites. And then, um, I had another neon one. This one I bought, I kind of put it into a divider. I bought this like gold set, but I feel like it kind of came out cheap. So I'm not even gonna link that for you guys because I really didn't like how that one came out. And then this one is like a whole bunch of letters. So you can put people's names and stuff in different colors. And then I also have letters in just black, which I also like a lot too. Pretty much all you need is um, the clay beads and then you need the letters for the bracelet. And then my favorite thing ever is some of these little packets. They actually came with these little gold beads and then these little gold stars which I feel like added so much. And then also I bought separately a pack of pearls, which is how I made this bracelet, the one that says Joshi B. And then I also added pearls to them, which I feel like made the bracelets really, really cute. So I'll leave that link down below. And then you are going to need some elastic string, which this stuff is super cheap and it lasts so long. So what I do to start is I just make it long enough, obviously for your wrist and then some, because if you make it just like the perfect length, it's pretty hard because sometimes the beads will like fall off, which is very frustrating while you're doing that. So I just go ahead and cut it. You can use scissors or whatever you need to use. And then what I like to do is depending on who I'm making it for, I will pick the name or whatever it's gonna say. So since I'm making it for you guys, what should I have it say? I'm just gonna have it say love. It can be a reminder to love yourself. So the bracelet I'm gonna make for you guys is gonna say love. So I'm gonna pick out my letters and then I'm gonna pick out my colors and like place them before I even put them on the bracelet. I'll place them on the table to make sure the colors go together. So yeah, that's pretty much how to make the bracelet. There's nothing really to it. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get into the girl talk that you guys wanted to do. So as I make this for you guys. Okay, first question someone wanted to know, tampons. Does it hurt? Which I actually thought was a really funny question. And I was actually so curious before I started my period. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I wonder if it hurts really bad. So I actually have a really funny story time with you. That's a little embarrassing, but also kind of funny. It is my first time ever on my period. I just remembered I used a tampon and it was before a basketball game. And this is like totally TMI, but I didn't put it in all the way so I could feel it and it hurt really, really, really bad. Like I could like feel it as I'd walk. Like it was terrible. To answer that question is tampons don't hurt if you put them in all the way and you put them in right. Like I think personally tampons are so much better than pads because I think pads are very uncomfortable and it just feels like you're sitting in your own nastiness. Not that like pads are gross or anything. Like I don't want, I know there's people who use them. I don't want you to think like I'm like hating on that. Personally, I just don't like it because that's what it feels like to me. It feels like I'm sitting in that and it feels like a diaper and I hate that feeling. So personally, I think tampons are so much more comfortable and easier if you do sports and stuff. So you just kind of have to suck it up and figure it out and make sure you're doing it the right way and put it in all the way. Josh is over there listening, probably rolling, dying, because he's like, this is disgusting, but it is what it is. So I think tampons are the way to go. Have you ever had a pap smear? If you have, what was it like? I am nervous. Okay, this is actually really funny because 
I did have a pap smear, but not until I was like 20. And you're supposed to get one, I'm pretty sure when you're like 16, but I was so scared. My mom literally was like, no, you need to get one. I was like, mom, I can't, I just can't do it. Like I literally can't get a pap smear. Like I'm way too scared. I mean, how traumatizing for like a high school girl to have to go drop their pants and then do all that. Like that sucks. But I think it is really good to go. And I was so nervous even when I was 20, like I was like mortified. I'm like, I'm not trying to have someone see me naked. Like this is just too much. I can't do this. And then um, I got it done. Not to mention my gynecologist. He was an old man doctor. Like he was like probably like 68 and a man. Like I thought I was gonna have like some young girl and be less awkward. No, it was a man. But I will say it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Like I really thought it was going to be like so traumatizing, but it wasn't. So like, I feel like you just gotta do it, get it over with. And I will be honest to this day, I still hate it more than anything. Like I literally get nervous the day before I'm like, oh my God, like this is so awkward, like I hate it so much. But in reality, like you gotta do it. It's good to know you're like healthy and everything's going, like that's better at the end of the day to know you're like healthy and it's something you gotta do. You just gotta suck it up and do it. Okay, this bracelet is turning out so cute. I have love on it, like right here, like it literally says love and then it has the two gold things. So it's turning out really cute. The only thing that's really hard about these bracelets is it's so hard to like pick them up and like put them on. They definitely take a minute to make, but I enjoy it. I think it's really fun making these bracelets just cause I feel like it's better to stay off your phone and do something more, I mean, it's not like productive, but better with your time, like creating is fun. All right, the next question is how to help your friend when you know they're in a toxic relationship. So that kind of sucks because there's nothing you really can do. I think the only thing is you can do is sometimes um, you can voice your opinion, but that also might cause your friend to push away from you because I even did that to my best friend one time. Uh, my friend Cassidy, she was like telling me something about my boyfriend, giving me like a little bit of a heads up, but not even like telling me not to date him. And like, I kind of like pushed her away because I thought she was like, I was like, oh, you're just getting jealous because like you don't want me to spend time with him. And um, cause she mentioned, she's like, you only spend time with him. You won't spend time with me. So I thought she was getting jealous, but really she was just being a good friend and like helping me out. And like, I kind of like wasn't friends with her for a little bit. And I mean, we, we both kind of had like different issues too. But then um, in the long run, she was just looking out for me. And I think you should always voice your opinion, but know that sometimes like your friend might get pushed away a little bit. But then if you guys are true friends, you guys will be, end up being friends again. Like me and Cassie have been friends since like I was probably like eight years old. So we've been best friends since then. I feel like nothing will break a true friendship if that makes sense. If you don't get your period for two months, is that bad? So I would say it's not bad when you first start your period. Like when I first started my period, it wasn't like regular, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't every 30 days or every 28 days like on the dot, but every girl's different. So like if it's always regular and you're doing stuff that could get you pregnant and then you missed your period, then I would be concerned that you might be pregnant if that's what you're question. But if, if you didn't do, um, if you didn't have, you know, SEX, then I don't think there's anything really to worry about because I know a lot of girls, like it's not always on the dot 30 days or 28 days. Or sometimes like I remember in high school, like there'd be times where like, I'd go like two, three months without getting my period. But then like it got regular as I got older. I feel so bad for my editor. Um, <laughs> if I was to sit here and listen to the girl talk, cause he's a guy, but I just, I also find it kind of funny. What age were you when you wrote your future diary to your husband? I actually wrote that a couple years ago, but I feel like it's never a bad idea if you're religious to write a prayer for your future husband and to start when you're young, because how cool would that be to look back once you marry your husband and you can read him the letters. I think that's just so cool. So I feel like it's never too late to start that. Okay, this next question is how to manage a long distance friendship. And I think that that's kind of hard, but like I actually feel like I can be one to talk on this since I literally moved across the country and I have a lot of friends back in Michigan that like I try to stay in touch with and I will say it's super hard, but um, my one friend Bree, she has this like alarm on her phone that every Tuesday she texts me, which I think is like actually kind of cool because it like forces her to remember to like text and that way we're always like updating each other and knowing what's going on. But honestly, I feel like the best way to stay in someone's life and to stay in touch with them is is FaceTime. Like if you FaceTime someone, I feel like it almost doesn't feel like you're living far away from them. It's, it feels like you're like actually hanging out with them. So I feel like I FaceTime my family and friends a lot back in Michigan and that helps me a lot. It doesn't feel like we live like that far apart. Okay, we are getting somewhere with this bracelet. It is so cute. If you guys want to win this bracelet, I'm gonna ship it out to one of you guys. All you have to do is comment down below your Instagram handle and then I'm gonna reach out to one of you guys and I'm gonna ship it out. I already have been making so many bracelets for our JD VIP members and then also just subscribers. I've been just like randomly going 
going through my DMs and asking people, I'm like, hey, do you want a bracelet? Cause I'm trying to like, I don't know. It's just fun to like give you guys a bracelet and I think it's fun. So if you guys want that, comment down below your Instagram on this video and then I'm gonna be reaching out to one of you guys. This one's actually a really good question. It's how to move on from a toxic relationship. And I actually think this one is so good because I actually have like lots of experience with this with my ex-boyfriend. I felt like our relationship was super toxic, but then also it was my first boyfriend. So I felt like, I just felt like so like attached, not even to like him, but to the idea of having a boyfriend. So for me, it was like really hard, even though like he basically was cheating on me. For me, it was like, I was trying to like justify everything in my head. And I feel like that's so bad. But the real reason is, is like, I was just, I didn't want to let go of the fact that like we had been dating and like, it was so comfortable to me. And it was the first time I'd ever been comfortable around like a boy ever. For me, it was like really hard to like, let go of that. And I think that's just like, it was let go of the comfortability, not him exactly. And I think there is no way to just get out of a toxic relationship and like feel good about it. I think at first how it always works is like you get out of it and like you're sad because like you miss like the comfortableness of having a boyfriend. But then after time, like this was what happened for me after like a couple months, I was like, what the heck? Like, why did I even like this relationship? Why did I think this was good? Why do I think this was healthy? It's like a light switch is in your head. And then you're like, wait a minute, that was like never good to begin with. I don't know what I saw in this. I don't know what I was thinking, but it's like sometimes you get blinded by like what you think is love. And I think sometimes when you just force yourself to get out of the relationship, you look back at it and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that I made that choice. So if you know it's toxic, it's never gonna not be toxic. So I, my advice would be just to do whatever you can, break up, it's gonna suck in that time. Time will heal everything, that's all. Which is actually really funny because someone just asked her like first breakup story. Um, my first breakup story was with my first boyfriend ever. I only dated, okay, so I dated someone for a day after my first boyfriend, um, which I actually think is like kind of funny to look back at now because I broke up with him over text, which first of all, probably shouldn't do, but we dated for like a day and we went on like a couple dates, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But um, my first breakup story, it wasn't really that great. It was just kind of like, I don't really want to get into it too much because it's kind of like a toxic relationship, toxic, crazy high school relationship. And like, I don't really blame anyone. Cause like, it's honestly like both our faults. Obviously like he did things that like were not good, but also like I should have got out of that relationship when it started. Like I should have seen red flags. It just wasn't a good breakup. So yeah, it was, it's sucky, but yeah, that's my first breakup story. I basically like told you, but didn't tell you. Okay, last question. What do you do if you are insecure about your body? So there's only a couple things you can do if you're insecure about your body. One, you can do things to make you feel better about yourself. For me, I know that like working out always makes me feel better. And it's not because I'm like, oh, I look skinnier, I look this. It just makes me feel like a more positive energy and it makes me feel like I'm actually doing something to better myself. But then also I feel like you have to realize is everyone's always so concerned about about what's on the outside. They're like, okay, I gotta do my hair, I gotta do my makeup, like I gotta look better, I gotta look better. And no one really cares about what's really important is like what's on your inside and like the person you are. So I think if you can like really think about how important it is to be pretty, like, cause that this is something that like everyone always says. It's like when you die at the end of the day, no one's at your funeral, like, oh my God, her hair was just amazing. Oh my God, did you see her smile? She had the best teeth. Oh my God, she looks so good. Like her style was next level. No, they talk about like the impact you make on people's lives and like nice things you did for people. So I feel like if you can remember that saying, that's like no one talks about how good you looked. They talk about like the person you are, focus on that. And then also you can do things to make you feel more confident, like working out and doing things, eat healthier, but also try not to like obsess over it. Because like I said, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, but I know we're all human. We all like want to like look our best and feel our best, which I think is really important too. So I would just say to realize that like every single person is unique and different. And even like things that aren't in societies, like if you have something that's like different, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but God loves you and God thinks you're beautiful and I think you're beautiful. I've never really looked at someone and be like, oh my gosh, they're disgusting. Like they're this, they're that. It's like, if they're a nice person, they're a nice person. So I think if you just remember that. So that is the last question. I am almost finished with the bracelet. This is what it looks like. It is turning out so cute and I can't wait to give it to one of you guys. And okay, this is another thing. When you're done with the bracelet, you literally just tie it. So like I said, this video is so easy to make this bracelet. I'm gonna finish this bracelet up and then I'm gonna get back to you guys. Okay, you guys, the bracelet is done. Don't forget to comment down below if you guys want to win this bracelet. This turned out so stinking cute. I put pearls on the back and then it just says love on it and then it has some really cute colors. So if you guys want this bracelet, 
comment down below your Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's just a little like girl talk. And don't forget, I'm gonna leave everything linked down below. Because like I said, there's really not much to explain in this video, but I will show you guys like in the beginning, like some of the patterns that I've done to these bracelets. So that way you guys can get a little inspo if you guys buy this stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.